Yeah, Mitch sends his uh, apologies. He would, really would have liked to have been here, but as they're dealing with the smolt run, it's rather an appropriate excuse uh, for not being here. So uh, I've been to the Allier for on and off for it's getting on 30, 35 years, and it's such a contrast from rivers here and, and rivers I've seen anywhere that it really has opened my eyes to, to the Atlantic salmon and what kind of a beast it is and just how we can't take things at face value. And I think hopefully this will, to some extent, illustrate to you what, uh, what the, the animal is capable of and the challenges that it faces in different parts of its range. So here's the, um, <clears throat> the Loire algae system. The spawning grounds are between 860 to 920 kilometers from the estuary. Not only that, the spawning migration is one of the longest spawning migrations of any stock anywhere, I think, in the salmon's range. The only further ones potentially are the ones on the north, the rivers on the north uh, Spanish coast. And the information there, which shows the, 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 the pathway of, of the marine migration of Allier smolts, is based on the Salsi Merge project that we did on genetic tagging. And it's possible to do this because the Allier population is highly distinctive genetically. And this may have something to do with the fact that it is well over 300,000 years old it's probably one of the oldest remaining salmon populations in, in, in the species. Uh, so, <clears throat> not only must the smolts complete that major migration in the river, but they then also have to migrate to the sea. And they begin that seaward migration around mid-April. And as it's much further south, there are major temperature constraints on getting down the river and getting out of the Bay of Biscay uh, while it's uh, still cool enough to, to move through it. So temperature is an important factor in, in the smolt migration here, perhaps much more so than it is in rivers further north. The other thing that the Loire Allier has is no end of obstructions, dams, weirs, and Patrick's only put these obstructions in because they're the obvious physical ones, but recently they've had uh, the addition of exotic species, and we might uh, feel that pike were a problem in rivers in Britain, but um, they've introduced into here the uh, catfish, the European catfish, and they grow, the biggest one I think they've measured in the last year or two is 2.7 meters long. And they think a 10 kilo salmon is a nice snack for lunch. And these w like to um, gather below these barriers. So that's another obstacle. I don't know whether they like smolts or not. They might be just a little bit too small for, for their, them. But it's a tremendous challenge anyway. So. <clears throat> the initiation here, uh, this is where I, I'm going to have to just read what he's... Initiation of downstream migration and late migrants, that's the main focus. So when you have a river that sat long, um, when you start, uh, may be very crucial to whether you make it to sea at the right time. And Chanteuge, which is where Patrick's based and where the Conservatoire National de Saumon Sauvage is based, that's the stocking facility, and, and that is in the heart of the, uh, of the salmon's remaining uh, spawning juvenile uh, territory, so 863 kilometers from the sea. And you can see there the time that the fish are moving through here. Um, now, let's see. Chantage, uh, temperature, etc. These issues. I can't go into that in too much detail. But at this point, the the temperatures are uh, rather appropriate. The fish are on track. Um, the first peak of captures at Chantage, middle to end of March. They travel at speeds about 32 kilometers per day. It's quite a pace, I think. Therefore, fish passing at Chantage at the end of March 
have the chance of arriving at the estuary at the correct time. Late smolts passing Chanteuse in late April won't be able to get even at that fast clip to the ocean at the time they need to. I'm not sure what's happening. Something's not come up on the screen here, so bear with me here. Uh, the background is... Yeah, okay, I don't know. Uh, basically what he's got is the timing of the smolts here. Worked on my computer. Yeah. He's got the, the, the smolt patterns that, that were at Chanteuge and the timing of it and the distribution. And what he's shown uh, down at the base of the river, which is meant to be this lower line here, um, he's got when there are smolts at the estuary at the right time. And if you look at the speeds that you expect the smolts to go, you can then go back to Chanteuge here and you can see that there is a group of smolts, the early ones, that have actually been able to get there and are probably the ones that have arrived at the right time in the estuary of the Loire. But there's also, when you see Chanteuge, there's this group here in, in, in these different years that basically, if you look at a rushed trip down the river, they're going to end up in these areas at these times and they're too late. They just don't make it. And that's a significant uh, impact on now, now Putez, as Ken mentioned, is the dam there, and this dam is in a river which has no lakes, uh, no ponds. It is just a straight uh, flowing river. There used to be above Putez in this area is about is it 100 or 200 Ken kilometers of prime salmon habitat. If you see it, you'd expect it to be completely uh, full of salmon, and yet it's virtually empty of salmon. And the Putez Dam has a big role to play in this. And whether it's been a barrier to adults early on, but they did put a Borland lift in there, or whether it's because this has ended up screwing up the smolt migration uh, is the issue that's been dealt with. And the conclusion is basically that it has been screwing up the smolt migration. So they, uh, Patrick and his crew studied the smolt behavior at the Putez Dam and they did these telemetry studies and they tagged wild smolts and they showed that there was increased swimming activity after the middle of April. But before then, there wasn't active swimming. So most of the migration in the upper reaches in the early stages of the smolt run is passive migration. What happens when you hit a dead water that's full of predators and you're not actively making for down the river. It, I can't imagine that you're, uh, you're in much luck for surviving that one. So it's only when um, it's too late that they actually start swimming actively. Now, part of the reason for this, there's another added complication which we don't fully understand. The fish that are above Putez have been stalked from below Putez. Uh, 100 or 200 kilometers downstream, not too far, and they were put up above. Was the adaptation of those smolts for being triggered by the conditions below the dam, they were then behaving above the dam as if they were below the dam and missing the boat, basically. So they're starting this active phase of their migration too late. So here's uh, showing the smolt behavior at Putez Dam, number of smolts attempting to pass the Putez Dam with the success of the uh, rate of passage. Last half of April, that's when everything's starting to happen. So great, beautiful looking smolts, lovely rearing habitat. Spawners love it if they can get up there and they're back, but all in vain. They're coming out at the wrong time. So this section of the river, which is the best part of the river for producing salmon, has been lost in terms of producing the smolts that are needed to sustain the population. And, and the population is certainly in a very precarious state and, and in decline. 
So, having made those observations on telemetry, Patrick and, and uh, his crew basically did some studies on active passive migration and uh, when the physiological window for seawater adaptation and that were occurring. And basically you can see in these early stages the fish are um, basically engaged in passive downstream migration. There's no, no upstream movements to any degree, but at this stage then in April they start their active or downstream migration at too late. There's a bit of active upstream migration, a, a fairly trivial. So they're not behaving as they need to in order to, to successfully leave the river. And again, it goes back to this question is, are these particular behaviors adjusted? They're probably heritable to a large degree. Are they being adjusted in each river system in order to ensure that the migration timing and behavior is optimal bo uh, both for success in the river as well as success once you hit the sea. So understanding migration strategies is important for understanding delays and the implications they have on mig migrating smolts. What happens when you put a dam in a river? Um, what happens when the temperature in the river changes? So the lower algae is lethal to salmon after about, is it June, Ken? Yeah. yeah, for about two or three months. So you get down there, even if you get out to sea, which probably isn't terribly good, you won't get there either. You'll be uh, food for, for somebody. Um, mid migrating strategies utilized by smolts may be more susceptible to dam blockage depending on the time of the year as well. So the interaction between this behavior, where the dam is, etc. And clearly, in a very big system like this, is going to be a very significant factor when you've got three months that takes you to go down the river, even if you're going at a fair clip. Understanding the behaviors of smolts exhibit during downstream migration could help to avoid late arrivals and environmental mismatch. So part of the reason that the EDF are responding is that this information on smolt behavior has been generated. It's quite clear that that impoundment has been a major factor in increasing in-river smolt mortality. And I think generally, Ken, you, they, they've been very good in, in doing their best. They're taking this dam down, a 17-meter dam, putting a 6-meter dam in place of it, putting smolt passage facilities in, reducing the length of the impoundment from, what was it, 6 kilometers down to less than a kilometer. So, a good example of what understanding what's going on uh, can help. So, thank you. I think that's, yep. Mm -hmm.